Some people love trouble. Some people will never stay away from trouble. They know it's out there and they just chase it. She's like, I'm scared he's doing the wrong thing. But with what she's doing, she's actually being an accomplice. Like, Rachel's been an accomplice. You're the one driving him to the place that he's not supposed to go. You could go to jail. You could you could be fined. You could whatever, whatever. Why are you doing this? <sighs> it's time for love after lock up, baby. Madness. Madness love. I don't know. I don't get it. We weren't homeless. We didn't have an abundance. If it wasn't for free stuff, I don't know how life would have turned out. I'd go on myself and get white trash. It was funny, but I mean, it's a statement of my, my life, you know? Stay here? Well, no, we're not going to stay here. So that's the backstory of their life. Like, they really, they really welfare and like free stuff that's how they survive so they had a really rough upbringing so in any case it's a day before father's day or whatever and he wants to go and visit his dad hasn't seen him in four years four and a half years or whatever his whole family is there um at the house but it's the weekend and he's not supposed to go anywhere on the weekends remember it's 8 till 5 or whatever that he can be out and then he has to be home and on the weekends he has to be home he's got an ankle monitor so wherever he goes they're gonna find out that he's not in the zone that he's supposed to be in anything this is just gonna go well rachel is worried sick but still decides to go with him and decides to drive i'm pretty sure he cannot drive um it's one of the restrictions so she drives him there why but the other thing that's really weird is that the parole officer is not picking up the phone maybe because it's weekend i don't know if you can reach these people on the weekend they've given you the instructions that's it deal with it we'll deal with you again on monday when you're able to go out and about and if you want to go a little bit outside of your zone you'll be able to reach us on monday through friday but on sun on saturday sunday you're not supposed to go anywhere anyway so maybe there's no reason to contact them anyway so that's probably why he's not able to reach them but he takes that as oh well they're not picking up the phone I'm going to do what I want to do. Hmm. But no weekends, not my pro agent's permission. So he leaves a voicemail as well. And uh, I can't get her to answer the phone. I'll call you back. I just don't want trouble. My father, you might want the address. It is Gives the address. Police about to be wee, wee, wee up in this piece because what? Kalamazoo, Michigan. Thank you. Bye. I think we're... And is that her phone? that he's using probably so all this is just wrong like couldn't be me you're not using my phone to call your parole officer and say um yeah so listen up i'm gonna break the rules um this is the address that i'm gonna break the rules at and catch me if you can <laughs> bye thank you <laughs> you're not gonna use my phone to do that and i'm not gonna drive you to wherever you're gonna commit your crime okay no or commit your crime is a crime you're do what you're not supposed to do basically risky. i don't care we're going we oui. mm. got people he's not even supposed to be around over there we don't know where these people are how do we know we're not violating that as well what? you're violating everything rachel at this point the minute you stepped into that car you're violating everything and the thing that i don't get is that everything is being filmed so even if they don't catch you in the moment don't you get don't you have to suffer the consequences after this airs and it's like oh so you guys thought you were slick huh okay these are gonna be the repercussions for disobeying the law for welfare i don't know uh if we would have made it this is what it is you know we, we didn't we don't come from the best life but we always have each other so i said at the end of the day that's all that matter that's a beautiful thing last year i would look at rachel in the car she's like the woman is scared bring little dougie over to visit with doug's family so you can't slide your seat up huh, man? Feel yes you're a tall guy yes you guys have switched seats but be nice doug be nice like he's not being nice like, yo, could you could you just scoot forward a little bit? You know, I got them long legs. Something like that. No, hey, come on. Scoot forward, man. That's just no way to talk to a son you've never cared for. And he's always a whole 11, uh, was it 12 years old? Chill out. You're welcome. They let me hang out with their kids. So their family is very receptive to Rachel. You know, they are married. So this is kind of a big deal. So he knows the whole family. He's been hanging out with the kids and everything like that. So that's really nice. Yeah. They've invited me into their home. No one's really seen him in like four and a half years. Look. That's the dad. That's Doug's dad. And he's not doing too great. So it's it's very nice that he's able to see him. Then some interesting stuff happens. Editing stuff. You guys, editing, editing. 
just just watch this right they walk up doc says something rachel says something they say it at the same time they mute whatever rachel says in this first clip and only highlight what dog is saying because obviously they all have their own separate mics right so with editing they just mute whatever dogs um, rachel says but then later in another clip you actually get to hear what rachel says just listen what's up you little son of a bitch so that's what he says what's up you little son of a bitch okay to his own dad which he hasn't who he hasn't seen in four and a half years but okay. oh what's up you little son of a bitch what's up you little son of a bitch so you heard that right the other clip is different Happy Father's Day. What did she say? Happy Father's Day. So you see, as now they've decreased his volume and I have put her volume up. This is the same clip, you guys, mind you. So she's saying, she comes and she's like, Happy Father's Day. As he's saying, What's up, you little son of a bee? Why they do these things, it's so interesting. I just caught that and I thought it was weird. Um, but interesting at the same time. I guess they're saying it at the same time. So you have to kind of do this so that we can get what he's saying and what she was saying. So yeah, she is a definitely a good woman for him because he's just a bit too wild and she could tone him down, but he doesn't seem like the type who wants to be toned down. Um, but yeah, she's being very respectful, obviously. And she's like, happy Father's Day. That's why you guys are here, right? Why do you call him a son of a bee? Like some of these kids talk to their parents crazy. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> this must be like seeing a ghost for real oh also did you guys catch that the bologna sandwich i guess they really do love their bologna sa sandwiches look at that the dad's eating a bologna sandwich just check this look at that boom <laughs> they must love them some bologna honestly it's a family thing i didn't think i'd be around out for two days and having hasn't gone to the family yet see if this is the weekend now, when you were free to walk out and about, why didn't you go and see them first? So then when is the weekend, you can be at home. Like some of these things, I don't, I just don't get it. To see him come on. I mean, she, she seems to love him. She seems to love him. Yes. And she seems to cooperate in everything that he's doing. That's wrong. Like I'm really expecting the cops to just come here because you have Something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen and they're not gonna like it. Yeah, right. That was a good shot though. Cameraman, you did well. You got an interview with Dog Senior and you got them playing around like kids <laughs> in the background. It's it's a cool Girl, shot. You know what I mean? I he loves Rachel. Which who wouldn't? What like, was that for me? So the mom, the mom is inside the house, doesn't even want to see Dog. Because of my choices. It's not my baby brother no more. That's a sister, and they're going on the what do you call it? Um, what do you call them things? A scooter? Is it motor bicycle? That kind of thing. Yeah, that's what he's going on. Which I'm sure he's not supposed to drive that either. But he is. And Rachel is like, oh yeah, let me sit behind you. Don't, don't. If you have friends or family members who like that rough life and like to do things that they're not supposed to do, don't follow them. Don't, don't go along with what they're doing. That's wrong. Bigger than me. I can imagine him being on but for how long? For how long? Even the sister doesn't think this is gonna last for long. The dad I remember growing up, my dad used to be a bigger guy. My dad had hands that you were terrified of. Stayed something, liver failure. You might need this. I gotta keep Uncle Junior in check. She's got a toy and uh Yeah. She's like, I gotta keep Uncle Junior uh in check so they call him uncle junior which is cute because there's like so many dogs in their family apparently so you've got dog senior and dog junior and then little doggy <laughs> so yeah i love her man you do yeah i hope you do i hope you do very good answer i hope you do the family loves rachel i hope you do that's the more important question why why are you like i hope so i hope you do do you really want a good life or not this woman really loves him it's cool I'm serious. I do. I ain't going nowhere. Get the girl and do right. She helps me, man. Yeah, but she helps me, man. Yeah. At the end of the day, this is this is a get. This is this is a way to just get out of that that lifestyle. You know, get out of that life. That's that's really what. Yeah, that's really what this is. She helps me, man. Not I love her so much that. No, she loves me, man. Oh, she helps me, man. That's what he said. It's all about the financial gain and the leg up in society because where else are they going to get it? If he goes back to his family, look look at how they're living. Look at, it's baloney all day, every day. It's still that kind of life. 
that he was trying to get away from, which led him to do the stuff that he wasn't supposed to do. So the prison system is just, the whole thing is flawed because it's a revolving door. Unless you're lucky to hit the jackpot with somebody like Rachel, who's really going to give you that leg up in society and going to help you financially to be stable, what becomes of people that come out of prison? What you need? All of you around? You see that he's actually not that tough of a guy. He's tall and all that and he, he, you know, there's all this facade, but deep down inside, you see, that he's now broken. Yeah, I left twice. I mean, but that was on me though. I did that, you know? I had ways out. I didn't take him. Freedom had very low value on it. So missing, not having it, I'm headstrong now. So he already didn't have anything. So his freedom meant not having anything. So losing his freedom, it's like you still don't have anything. Like there was no difference to his life because he already came from nothing. So he was going to nothing with no freedom, but at least it was something in a different way, you know? Um, some people like prison, to be honest. Um, that's one thing we also need to acknowledge. Some people love prison. Some people just like it. Some people are like, meh, I don't really care. I'm here. I don't pay rent, but I'm not free. I'm out there. I have to pay rent and I'm free. Like, mm, mm. You know, prison is very structured. When you come out in the world, you need to structure your own life. Like some people like it in there, like it better than out, you know? Tell us all about Dougie. That's Douglas's sister, or Dougie's sister. And she's the one who was taking care of little Dougie, right? So Doug Jr. is like, tell us all about little Dougie. You want to see some letters he wrote that I found in his bedroom yesterday? You want to see some letters he wrote that I found in his bedroom yesterday. Now, why were you in his bedroom sifting through letters? That's his personal stuff, okay? But then again, he is 12, and these kids these days, you don't know what he's writing, so okay. But once you know this, just keep that to yourself. There's no point blasting it in front of the whole family. I think that's really wrong. He still deserves his privacy. Unless you saw things that were a bit scary, dangerous, then you can tell folk. But even that, probably, yeah, I don't know. Just, just, just not like this, you know? Don't speak of those. I I'm being dead serious when I say that too. Don't speak of those. Like a whole grown man. I'm being serious when I say, well, don't speak of those. Whilst he's drinking his monster energy drink as a 12 year old kid. This is another sister. And she's like, the other sister that took care of little Dougie treated him horribly, badly. That's cool. Oh. And Doug Jr. doesn't even care. Because he's like, at least somebody was able to take this, this kid out of my house. Who the heck was going to take care of my kid? Because I think the mom is also in this rough lifestyle and stuff like that. So who was going to take care of his kid? So he's just happy that somebody was able to take care of his kid, right? But then his oh sister is here Ashley telling him. her. Can't tell me otherwise. Ashley's she loves him. Can't tell me oh, otherwise. Cam. Ashley raised Dougie for the most part. But never asked for him back. So then Rachel wanted to take over. And then the sister never asked for him back. Right? So, but yeah, she did. She did a lot. If I wasn't married to a felon, I would have got your son. Ashley stood up. I couldn't. It doesn't matter, could or not. Ashley was the first one there. God. No, but she couldn't be the first one there because, like she's just expressed, she was married to a felon or with a felon. So because she was with a felon, she couldn't have dog, little doggy in her house. So she couldn't be the first one there. She probably would have loved to, but she just couldn't because of the circumstances. So yes, I know you feel indebted to your other sister who took care of Tara. Blah, blah, blah. Who took care of little Dougie, right? You feel indebted to her, but this is not the way to go about things. This is totally not the way to go about things. Right? I have expectations for it. But she doesn't have to disrespect him in front of everybody. It's not disrespecting him, it's so giving him a hard time. Yeah. Giving him a hard time is also not necessary. And you were not there. So you you might as well really take this this thing that your sister is saying quite seriously because you were not there to see what she was doing. And I think it's a good co conversation that you need to have between your sister and little Dougie. Like how did things go? How did that affect you? Like really talk to your son as well, more than anything, because you can't just be like, at least you took care of him. So even if he was locked in a dungeon and only got white bread to eat every single day with a little bit of water, that's, that's fine because I wasn't there. So whatever anybody else is going to do to him all well, you, you can't think that way. That's wrong. Ah! And the kid is traumatized screaming. Stop. This is a traumatized kid. Okay. This kid needs therapy. This whole family needs therapy. This is a lot to deal with. And there's no therapy. It's like, you're out of prison. There you go. Here's the world. Figure it out. We don't care. And you have people like this. And little dog is going to grow up to be a big dog. And what is he going to do in society? Who is he going to be? Who cares about him and his well-being? No therapy. Nobody's in his head. All we have now are some letters. 
to see what he really thinks about his life circumstances. But he needs to talk to somebody and somebody needs to take him seriously. Even Rachel could take over that role. But she's probably also like, mm, this is not my son, so let me not go too deep. Let me just make him comfortable. And she's very caring though. But this is bad. <laughs> well, that's charming. Just just lovely that. The sister obviously also really cares about little dog. So why are you telling her to shut up, B? Why? Like, why? I don't get it. But I've rambled on enough about this couple. This is a whole mess. They all need therapy. And Doug, I get him. He wants to spend time with his dad. But this was the wrong way to do it. This might land you back in prison. Or the halfway house. Or whatever. Madness. Madness, love. <laughs> Been in there for 11 years. And you still haven't learned your lesson. You've not learned that when these people say no. It's a hard, definite nope. In any case, if you're not already part... <laughs> If you're not already part of the family, make sure you hit mom's thumb. As soon as that subscribe button, comment because I really want to know what you think. Like because you always like this video and hit the notification bell while she added. I'll see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. Daily ish videos up in here in the meantime. Make time for glorious life. It's time to say what? Living it right. Whoo wee. This was a lot. God bless.